session is going to actually focus on that. I know we talked about some of the different levels of um, diets, and we didn't really touch on puree as much in the last session because we're actually going to um, have a live cooking demo of some really fun, cool puree items. So I would like to um, introduce our speakers before we get started. Um, you guys will get to see Heather. Um, I don't think Heather needs another introduction. She was one of our panel members from before, but she was really instrumental in helping create um, the puree program that we're going to spend some time looking at this afternoon. Um, joining her is Chef Michael. Hi, Michael. I'm pronouncing your last name wrong. I know it. Gauthier? Okay, I got it. And um, Michael has been working in food service for 34 years. Um, brings a lot of different knowledge and experience. Um, in his time in food service, he really found a passion in senior living, um, really putting together programs, offering resident choice, um, and really looking at it from a dignity standpoint and looking how he can really improve the quality of life of the residents. So Heather and Chef Michael make a really great team. So please welcome them as they come up and do a puree demonstration for us. So as we're getting ready, we have a, a slideshow that's going to be going on behind you that kind of is going to over, show you an overview of the program, and then um, we'll go through it together, uh, show you a little bit of the detailed part of it. We just kind of want to make sure that we, you get to see everything. So that's kind of going on now while uh, we introduce ourselves. Watch the screen. Don't watch me. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much. Um, I just really want to take an opportunity to express how sincerely humbled and honored Heather and I are to be here with you today, the best of the best in the healthcare dining industry. Um, yeah, yeah, which is really cool. Thank you all so much for having me today. And let's have some fun, all right? So, <laughs> I have five main rules in my kitchens. Number one, would you serve this to your mom? If I'm not going to serve it to my mom, I'm not going to serve it to anyone. And believe me, there have been days where everybody got peanut butter and jelly. Okay. <laughs> Number two is very important. We eat with our eyes. If it looks bad, it tastes bad. Okay. Number three, if you eat good, you feel good. If you feel good, you go home. Number four, also very, very important. It's called health care for a reason. Number five, the secret to success is to own it, but you just invested your last penny. Fortunately, here I am today again, thank you. This program is designed to return the dignity and change the quality of life for all of our residents and all of our patients. Together, we can do this. What I'm about to show you, anybody can do this. So again, let's have some fun. So seriously, think about it. You're sitting at the table with three of your friends. They're all eating a fairly nice meal. All of a sudden, you're like, sir, lift the lid. And hopefully your friends are polite enough that they don't say it, but you know they're thinking it. What is it? Breaks my heart that every day people are saying, I don't know. This needs to change. I experienced this myself as I lost my grandfather to Alzheimer's. And I'll tell you, 11 years ago, it was, it was tough. A year later, not even realizing, I applied for a job as a director of dining services for a small assisted living facility in Quincy, Mass. About two weeks later, I realized, wow, I can make a difference. And 10 years later, here I am. So again, thank you. I hope you enjoy our presentation. So we want to have our volunteers come up. <laughs> come on up, guys. 
Let's have some fun. So we're asking people from the audience to, to come and help us to show how easy it is. So that's kind right. of the process is here. And Michael's going to have each one of them. So we're going to do um, a little challenge. <laughs> so, have you ever worked in the kitchen? Yes. Okay. Have you ever decorated a cake? Yes. Okay, excellent. I'm going to have you pipe out some green beans. I'll show you the first one. Then have it. Okay. Have fun. You, you like puzzles? Sure. Fantastic. So what I'm going to have you do, so I'm going to have you pick out some already frozen molded puree items, and you're going to set them up on these four plates using, they're already set together. Okay. Made it easy on everybody. Okay. So, all right. So. So now there's a whole bunch of different ways that you can do this, okay? My facility, what we do is we mold, freeze, and then look at the menu of the day, and we just go in the freezer and pull it out, much like she is doing right now. However, how do we get there? You don't always have to have molds. There's all kinds of options. So we're gonna start with this basic pipe. Now you could just do straightforward green beans like that. However, and you don't have a lot of space, you can create height. Not too bad for just quick. This might be a little bit more. Are you okay? Comfortable with that? Yeah. I need some gloves. Okay. Okay. So, you have your turkey, your roast beef, your beef stew, your fish. Roast beef and the beef stew. Go live down. All right, have at it. Have fun, ladies. Thank All you right. so much for your help. Michael's going to start uh, the puree process because uh, we're doing peas, which we know is a, a difficult, um, one of the most difficult vegetables to do. So that's one of the reasons why we wanted to show you how to do the peas. So he's going to start that as they're um, working on their plates here. But the point is that it's simple and that anybody can do it. And in Michael's kitchen, he has taught everybody, the diet aids, uh, they all know how to do the, do the puree. They know how to, pre if someone asks for a meal, they know how to put it together and present it. So it's not just the chefs that are doing it. And the, the program the, is really a great, innovative way because what you do is when you have uh, green beans on the menu, you just put another pot of green beans on or you add, a, you know, steam up some extra green beans and then you go ahead and, and um, fold out some of the green beans and just throw it in the freezer and then you have those and you keep them and, and so that when someone actually has them on the menu, you're just picking them out and serving it and serving it and serving it. So during the actual meal service, you're not really curing anything up. The only thing that you'll be pureeing is usually the starches because they're get gummy and you want to do them really at the point of service. But even some, we'll show you some uh, starches that we have done that are frozen. You see in the um, beef stew, there's uh, potato chunks uh, that have been frozen, molded, and then uh, we've done So that's kind of the whole process here. So Linda, how, how, do, you, how do you feel about that? Very easy. Okay, great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and so the best thing that it's at, at room temperature is a good temperature to do it. Um, if it gets too cold, it's it kind of harder yeah. to. Yeah. Um, but it's easy. I think the more you do it, the faster right, you'll get better at it. Right, yes, yeah, so you can put parchment paper on it and then it's easy, flips up. The other thing yeah. is um, spraying with like a pan uh, spray so that it, it doesn't stick. So, that, yes, those are the tricks. No, that's fine. So that's good. You want to do one more, and then this kind of looks like an asparagus. <laughs> oh yes, and we do the mixed vegetables. Yes, I know. Not brown mixed vegetables, right? <laughs> and then these are the plates. You can start seeing that she's uh, plating up. Just these are frozen molds or uh, cauliflower. Mixed vegetables, we were talking about, they're really yeah, just um, strips and then cut into little uh, 
squares, fish, and you just put the sauce on that you need to. That's fine. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we'll let you finish up when you're done. You can just sit down when you feel like you're done. So we're going to come over to where Michael is. He's peering up the peas. First of all, you want to ensure that you drain the product really well. And with the peas, you kind of overcook a little bit so they're soft. And anything that's somewhat fibrous and do not do asparagus. Not worth it. It ends up being like 10 bucks a pound by the time you're done. Not worth it. So, do green beans. Even take the broth from asparagus. Yeah, that's one of the good things about the IDS, DSI too, is that when you're, if it doesn't match or doesn't make the qualifications, then you can you know, make the decision not to utilize it. So this, this is just in general, but you know, you would um, make sure that you used a, a dr uh, drained um, product. You'll just um, puree it up so you can get to as smooth as possible. And Michael is going counterclockwise all blades oh, go heard. counterclockwise. If you Either that not, or you're going to end up getting rubber <laughs> tips into your Before puree <laughs> product and you're not going to have very good rubber spats left either. Right. <laughs> so with the peas, unfortunately it doesn't meet the, it's fine, uh, it doesn't meet the qualification because of the hull. So um, what we are going to do is Right, a little bit more, I don't know if I'm totally done. Always scrape once. New tools are always sticky. Yeah, we noticed that the new tools are <laughs> well, they're not broken in yet. And so what we use is just a double mesh strainer here, it's a very simple um, piece of equipment that you can purchase. And you're just getting out all the particles that aren't gonna you can't make into the fine smooth product it doesn't take very very long you do, are going to lose some of your product because of that so you do have to account for it when you're actually doing your recipes to um, increase the amount of peas that you're putting in for the portions but um, other than that uh, just you could just put it through the strainer and then uh, you'll we'll puree it again and to help it get through, you can just use a rubber spatula, and uh, really you can see it's not losing, we're not gonna lose that much product uh, after all. And just as Michael's doing that, some of, some of the other products, that now this is a fibrous product, so we're just trying to show you that, but some other products are really high in water content, like watermelon, um, some of your vegetables like lettuce, and they're very difficult to uh, puree and to get it into try to even shape it or make it uh, edible. So, like with the watermelon, what we do to, as a thickening agent is add applesauce, just unsweetened um, applesauce to give it some texture, and then um, you can add some thickener too. But if you add it just thickener, by the time you were done, you were eating red thickener, <laughs> so uh, or pink at that point. Uh, and same thing with like lettuce. We notice the same thing, but there's other fibrous vegetables like this, like corn. Um, there's also, you know, sometimes, usually the seeds in the in the in the um, strawberries, will, you don't actually need to. They will puree up pretty well, but blueberries, the skins you have to take. You corn. know, corn. This so is always cream style corn too. How do yeah. you do the corn? The corn we use, we start doing the cream. We start with cream style corn because then it's already broken down a little bit. Even you could, if you oh, want yes, to, you can use the. Too canned um, canned peas instead of frozen peas, but uh, they're not as high quality, so. Uh, but you can either use both ones. Uh, the other thing is, uh, what say? with the berries, mashing up, you know, going through, and if you're going to use like frozen fruit, because a lot of times you can't get uh, fresh fruit, you can, you know, just make sure that you defrost at the fruit before you start. You can even like, uh, blanch it or microwave it to kind of break it down, um, the frozen fruits, and then once they get into the, the blender, they're already, you know, in a soft. So that's a big thing, we, you know, we talked about before with the, the meats tenderizing them before you try to manipulate it any further. So now that we've got most of the product, smoother product left, Michael's going to put it back into the Roboku, and um, it's still a little watery, so we're going to have to thicken it up a little bit. 
And what we try to do is the least amount of liquid and thickener as possible to maintain the flavor. And just um, with the peas, you can see it kind of turns a little gray. So just a few drops, not too much. Don't want neon um, <laughs> peas, but just a few drops of food coloring. It just you'll see what the difference is. We'll, we'll compare. And remember, it you can it. always add more, but you can't take it out. <laughs> That's true. So we'll just add a little bit of the, the food coloring. We're just going to put a little thickener in. And with the liquids, you can use whatever liquid you use to maybe two that's left over from actually uh, cooking the vegetables, or we can use vegetable broth, low sodium is great, uh, so we don't add any more salt to the product that we need to. And you can see that it's just, just getting a little bit greener. And you compare that to the to what it was, so you kind of can see where it's. Oh, yeah. Oh, cool. So it's still a little thin, and we're going to add thickener to get it to the right consistency. And what do we do first? Taste it. Taste it. Taste it. I'm good. Good. I serve that to my mom after <laughs> all day long. And Michael does a great job, too, of making their own stocks and using, you know, uh, herbs and seasonings instead of salt and pepper. We're uh, cooking up a lot of garlic. Uh, it's got mixtures of different uh, spices that it's put together. So the food is really flavorful because, you know, we can make it look good, but if it doesn't taste good, we eat with our eyes, but then once you see it tasting, it still needs to be taste good. So that's the, um, the only food that is actually worthwhile is any food that's consumed. So we want to make sure it safe, it looks good, and tastes good. That's our main goal here, and just to improve the quality of life and the dignity of the person. So they, they're, when they're sitting down, they know what they're getting. They've had surveyors uh, question if it was even puree at Michael's facility. Four years, no deficiencies. Yeah, That's awesome. deficiency free four years, and uh, they even, you know, they're so intrigued by it, they want to test it, and um, they actually like the puree dish better than the, than the, the regular uh, one. The regular <laughs> one. Yeah. Uh, that particular day it was a seafood stuffed sole. And uh, so same stuffing, puree, and then using one of the fish molds that we saw in the uh, earlier part. And just put it on top and re it. Excellent. Yeah, it's really good. And so what we did was we really tried to use all these tips and tricks in the recipes so that that's a, the training tool going along. And it, we can test it with the IDDSI testing of puree and um, it sticks with just a little tail. And you want it to be able to hold just enough of a peak. So with your proteins, you're looking for a mashed potato consistency. With your fruits and your vegetables, you want more of a thick custard, thick pudding consistency. Remember, don't add too much thickener because it's going to come up tasting like really gummy and it's like, yeah, no good. So what we try to do is put these steps in the recipe for them so that um, they'll know and give them some descriptions of how, how things need to be. And one of the uh, tricks that Michael uses is to, before he puts it into the pastry bag to pipe, is to actually wrap up the food in the plastic wrap and it kind of protects not only um, the pastry bag, you can then you can reuse those and keep them. You can have a bunch of them on the side and you just kind of go and do it when you have time. It also makes it a little easier to uh, control the uh, food when you're trying to pipe it. You always want to try and get as much air out possible. Now, the, most, the biggest question we have is like, how are you going to implement this? It seems like it's overwhelming, kind of like IPDSI. Uh, but just to do, start small and just keep on working it. Um, there's all different types of molds. And even like this mold is for peas, but you can use it for baked beans, you can use it for corn. You know, it's, it's universal. You can use it for all different, um, you know, you can use it for a lot of different things. You don't have to use mold. You can cut things like we were, and you can pipe things. So you could be really creative in uh, utilizing 
the different products that you have already that you don't even have to do anything for. So uh, Mike, Michael just uh, poked a hole in the plastic wrap that was c containing the um, pure, pure peas. And we do recommend that you use a piping bag to to um, fill the molds because it will get the little bags. cloth bags, the disposable ones. If it's thicker item, they got to pop. Just make a mess. And you, you can clean those. We have uh, got some special brushes that you can actually clean those and keep those nice. Even the molds. You've had molds for over five, ten years. Uh, yeah, actually, my um, my last facility sells molds that we got seven years ago. Yeah. So in don't put up the dishwasher. <laughs> just um, use, just put them in the uh, three compartment sink and sanitize them that way. But piping it in will help get it into the nooks and crannies so that you get all the little uh, detail of the different product. And so you're just gonna, you know, you're gonna uh, puree up a bunch, fill up your molds. Uh, try to make sure that you can utilize all the extras. If you do have any extras, you can always, uh, you know, use some of this, use as garnishes, other things. We try not to waste any product. So that's one of the first things when we talk about molds. Oh, this is going to cost. It's going to take too long. And then as a dietitian, I was like, oh, you're sure that's uh, half a cup? You know, we're going to have to measure that. <laughs> but in the, in the long run, it's like it doesn't really matter. They eat it. Actually, that's great. The majority of the molds are already measured by the federal. Right guidelines. So for instance, these will measure out to a solid one half cup or four ounces. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to worry about that. And one's going to be a little shy. So we'll answer, right? So you just put, pop those in the freezer. Oh, usually just overnight is fine. Well, an hour and a half actually. And these we did yesterday and are um, already been frozen. So we just want to show you how easy they can just pop right up. You can spray it with the pan spray as well if you have problems uh, having a difficulty getting the product out. Then you individually portion them, put them into a Ziploc bag in the freezer, voila. And when someone wants peas, we'll get the peas, put it on the plate, and reheat it. All right, so we're going to move on to, um, so that's really what, you know, the, for the pureeing of fruits and, veg and uh, vegetables, and uh, we talked a little about the starches that you do those a lot on at the time of service. So bread was the other product that we really were having difficulty with, and we originally were slurring, like I think a lot of you probably have done, and just the inconsistency of the product and the safety of it. Uh, we decided to um, move to a product that's uh, that you can use. Uh, there's several different companies that have a puree bread product. So this is what Michael's going to do. And then it, we can use it for, we do like a basic muffin, a basic cake, a basic cookie, um, bread. And then, you know, if it's cinnamon toast, put cinnamon on it. If it's a blueberry uh, muffin, we put puree blueberries on it. So we just, um, you can use one product and just use it multiple different ways. It's really simple. You just add a little. It, you just add a little margarine and hot water. And it's best actually to mix it with your with your hands. And then uh, Michael's going to do. Gonna do the, he's going to do the chocolate cake. So this. We're just going to add some chocolate to it, and then it'll be uh, in some, you know, it'll give some sweetness and some uh, chocolate texture to it. And then you can just uh, use whipped cream or something to, to garnish it with. Cocoa powder, give it some. And this great product, you can just make it, and it's pretty much ready to go. You can, if you want to, like just some of our some of our sandwiches, we do. You can, or you can make up a bulk as well, like we were doing with the vegetables, and you can freeze it and re-therm it. So, um, or just if you're doing like um, cold sandwiches, you can put it together, put it in the fridge overnight, and then um, serve it the next day so it's at the proper temperature. And it's just, you know, a cookie cutter, square cookie cutter, and just gonna mold it in. And 
Okay, can I talk okay? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> So if you want, we can um, start plating. We got like six minutes left. Okay. We want to do a sandwich. No, no time. Okay, no time to do sandwich. Sandwich is just as easy. You just roll it out. You saw it on the video, and um, put the put the frost in. We did a hot dog. It was simple. Just roll it over, and turn it. But the plating, we really want to make sure that you do get to see this and how simple it is. Um, Here's some of the um, plates that we just had from before, you know, just re-thermed it. That's a, a beef stew. Oh, this is a Reuben French fries, and Michael used roasted potatoes to get it that brownish color. All these products were frozen originally and then just assembled and re-thermed. Michael's doing spaghetti and meatballs. Use the piping bag. There's all different types of um, tips that you can use. You can make like the long flat ones for noodles. You use the small one for spaghetti. This is meatballs that were you know pureed up. Now we just use a scoop. Right, simple sauce. What we do is we have like pureed meats, just a, a general meat like a pureed chicken, a pureed fish, pork, and you do the molds, and make them in bowl. And then when barbecue chicken's on, you put barbecue sauce on it. When teriyaki chicken, you put teriyaki sauce on it. Mm. So it's the sauce of the day. So it's not, you're not, um, you're reusing the products and it's uh, simple for the, for the cooks. We want to show you the point of service. So a lot of you want to do um, service right at the, at the table side. And here you can serve a, the product right from the, they can choose. What do you want? What would you like? You want uh, the broccoli or the peas? And they can actually, the resident can choose what they want and you can serve it right from the steam table. Did you serve that to your mom? Yeah. Absolutely. Woo! Yeah. Well, I think it's a good answer. 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 Uh, he has like parsley flakes you can put on, you know, just be creative. That's, and his, his staff has just really embraced it and it's his passion, but uh, this is chicken parm, you know, just. Oh, come on, baby. <laughs> You're in a movie. Come on. <laughs> come on. I had a knife. That is actually a really good thing. Nice. Ooh. And we always want to put sauces on, keep it moist. So what we did in addition to doing, we did a, a manual too that kind of has the tips and tools and gives you instructions on how to purchase some of the things, how to cut things, you know, gives you some ideas. And then actually our recipes um, would, you know, give the actual instructions. So we had, and we did videos and some uh, webinars with our, our staff to, to work well, like that. Well, I chicken farm job. So. Mm. Good. Um, would you mind sharing question? with a group just, I know you shared um, in some of our sessions getting ready for it, just how much more the residents were eating. Yeah, we noticed like 60% increase in the intake. So that, you know, if you're thinking about dollars and how much it's going to cost and labor, we were trying to show you the labor is pretty, you know, simple, but the cost of saving on supplements and, you know, just the improving of it, someone's nutritional status is just, it's going to outweigh. Mm -hmm. That. And you're not throwing out all that puree. Right, you're not throwing out. You're and the nice it. thing is, you're using all of the same ingredients. You're not buying right. anything extra except for one thing. Instant thickener. 25 pound box is $42. And even in the biggest facility where I had 24 purees, it still lasted three months. So it's an extra $120 a year. You're saving money. And we bought all that equipment that Michael brought was like $300. So, you know, your supplies are not that expensive either. So all right. Really one last little trick, because I only have two minutes. So we have a steak. I like my steak grilled. Ooh. 
to those smoking liquids. A little bit of gravy, master. There you go. All right. 